So whilst we're in our member entity, there's a couple of extra methods that we've not yet implemented. So get salt, we can actually just return null for because we're using bcrypt. If you're using a different encoding mechanism, then you may need to provide a salt here. And again, I'll link to more information on that in the show notes. And because our member entity is going to get serialized into our session, we don't want the situation where our plain password is potentially stored in plain text on disk. So the way around that is to simply set the plain password to be null. So the interesting thing there now is that we know that when logging in, we get this username password token. So knowing this, to programmatically log ourselves in after a successful registration, we need to emulate this process. So to do that, we're going to create a token, which is a new username password token instance. And then the properties of this, as you can see, we need the user, some credentials, which can actually be null, but we'll provide them anyway, as we already have them. The provider key, which is the most confusing of all four of these options, and then the roles. The roles are critical because without them, we won't actually be seen as authenticated. So the user is really straightforward. We already have that, it's our member. The password or credentials, also straightforward. We already have them in the form of the password. Provider key, I'll come back to in a sec. And then member, get roles, returns the roles that we need. So I'm just gonna do member, get roles as that fourth option. But it's this provider key that's perhaps the most confusing because if you look inside security.yaml and you look at your providers, which is where I in instinctively sort of began to look when first looking into this, this is not what it's actually talking about. It's actually talking about the name of your firewall. So in our case, the provider key needs to be main. But I don't want you to just take my word on this. I'll show you more on this in a sec. Now this token is what represents our user in our case, this Q user throughout the life cycle of our request. And Symfony is really about the journey between request and response. In our case, once we've logged in and our request has been authenticated, this token is the representation of our data used by Symfony's security context. We saw inside our member entity that we have this unserialize and serialize functions. And that's how the object that represents our user is saved off to the session. And remember our member is our user because we implement user interface. It is serialized to the session. On the next and subsequent requests, this object is unserialized out of the session. Even though we have an email property and you may potentially have other properties on your member or your user, you don't need to serialize them all as the actual underlying member object will be looked up anyway from the database via the ID. Of course, none of this will work unless we actually save off this new token into the token storage. It's where Symfony expects the token to be. So we'll get access from the container to the security token storage service onto which we will set our token. Now, truthfully, at this point, I appreciate this is a beginner's guide and this is most likely very overwhelming. Now, the good news is in the real world, this is pretty much just copy and paste. It's just nice to know, in my opinion, how and why this stuff actually works. And I'd hate to gloss over it as it is really important. Now next, we need to get access to the session and onto the session, we need to set a key starting with underscore security underscore and then the name of our firewall, which in our case is main. If you had a different firewall name in here, you would need to change this and this section here to whatever you have as your firewall name. And into there, we want to serialize the token. So with this section in place here, we have effectively programmatically logged in our user after registration. So now if we were to log out, go to register, and this time we will register as E and E, or in this case, triple E, E at E.com, one and one we can see that not only are we registered, we're also now logged in. 